make ramen in the coffee pot, and I broke everything. Oh, hello, you beautiful tropical H cuties. I just woke up from my tent in the pit, and I'm ready for Parks and Rec trivia. This is literally the greatest live mobile game show in the country, and I am your deluxe host beef sandwich, Oju Angelo. No, Jello Shot. No, no, J Shot, aka Adam Scott Rogowski. Live from Pawnee, of course, celebrating Valentine's Day with Parks and Rec bloopers on Instagram. Nick and his cat Ann Perkins. Yeah, he named his cat Ann Perkins. Parks and Rec and HQ superfan Nicole, whom I met at Starbucks earlier today, and Naveen Alexandra with a birthday. Tonight, I'm asking 12 questions all about your favorite show. They start easy and get harder than trying to understand the cones of Dunshire. The object of our game is not to accumulate cones, but simply to answer all 12 questions correctly. And if you do, you'll be a winner, winner, chicky, chicky, parm, parm dinner, walking away with your share of our grand prize. One million points. And $1,000. Maybe you can afford a Reggie Wayne jersey to get married in. I don't know what bird's nest soup is, and at this point, I'm too afraid to ask. But I do know that we're ankle deep into season two. And points are back, baby! You can accumulate them throughout the game with every question you get right. Also, by sharing your results on social. Points help you reach levels. Leveling up gives you free passes. A free pass lets you get a question wrong and stay in the game. The higher your level... The more free passes you have, you can climb as high as level 10, hit level 10, oh, and then you'd only have to answer a few questions correctly to win HQ. Yeah, and those levels, good news, they last the entire season long. For every point earned by players this season, the season finale jackpot will keep building bigger and bigger. The more you play, the more we pay, that's right. Let's check in on that prize right now. It was at around 30,000 last night, we're at 32,298 tonight. That could be enough to buy lot 48. Open your own Paunch Burger franchise. Hey, do you have an extra life tonight? That can help you win. You can use it once per game, not on the final round. Of course, you can get them for free playing five days in a row, referring your friends, or you can get one right now. And those extra lives can be used in trivia and words. Uh-huh. Our new game, HQ Words. Hello, word nerds. There she is, Anna Roisman. Host at HQ Words at 9.30 every night. You solve word puzzles to win cash. 9.30 tonight, following trivia. You can subscribe right now. You see that button? Subscribe to HQ Words so you get notified when Anna goes live with her game. But but we got our game right now. What the mother effing, CSing, effing king F is going on right now? Parks and Rec trivia, that's what. I hope you brought a change of clothes because your eyes are about to piss tears. This quiz is going to make Benghazi look like white water. Somebody text Detlef Shrimp. It's game time. So let's get down to the nitty pony. Let's get this show on the road, baby, with over a half a million of you live in this thing right now for Cumero. And then the numero uno. Pawnee's beloved Lil Sebastian was what kind of animal? A fire-breathing dragon, a poisonous tree frog, or a miniature horse? Uh, little Sebastian was an instant phenomenon when he debuted at Harvest Fest 87. For the next few years, Sebastian was the number one boy's name in Pawnee. Number three for girls. Ben Wyatt may not have understood his appeal, but you get it. The world famous Lil Sebastian. What? Yes, oh, oh my god! Hey. It's really here. Yeah. Well done. That horse has an honorary degree from Notre Dame. Miniature horse. A little Shetland pony. 349,580 of you lighting five thousand candles r.i.p little sebastian you're getting cute too councilman jeremy jam is known for which appropriate catchphrase you just got jam eat my shorts or whoa he's the proprietor of jam orthodontia kind of a badass wild card and he sure knows how to get under nopi's skin by calling her nopi for one he's a really fun way of verbally checkmating her and his many many adversaries you just got jammed Oh, it's Jeremy Jam himself? Yeah. The councilman delivering his catchphrase? Yeah, that's right. John Glazer? Yeah, how's it going? Hi! And 344,336 <laughs> not getting jammed on this one. How about that, John? How did everyone not get it? Yeah. Whoa? 
That's from I've Blossom. Yeah. Show. Eat my shorts. But it's just Jeremy Jam. You just got jammed. Yeah. Come on, guys. Let the record show. Everyone got that right. Oh, no, no. A lot of you didn't. John, good to have you here, man. Good to be here. Do I just look here? Do I look Yeah, you can here? just look straight All ahead. Right. Hey, I got a question. Uh huh. My favorite episode featuring Jeremy Jam. Right. You getting slapped in the face repeatedly by Leslie. That was a good one. Did she ever actually get you in real life? No, we had some good distance. Uh, the stunt guys did a good job of prepping us. Uh, I never got hit once. It was all fake. Many weeks of training for that mm -hmm. scene. Yeah, it was fun. That, so, was a, that was maybe my favorite one also. Well, you're my favorite character from the show. I want to keep you on retainer if you don't mind. Sure. Just in case there's a savage question tonight and a lot of people get jammed. Okay. All right, we might have to... Have you deliver that, that catchphrase again? Because right, cool. never get tired way. of it. Yeah, John John Glazer stepping stepping off to the side. There's his thumb. Hey, if cash rules everything around you, and I know for some of you it most certainly does, then you're not going to want to miss Sunday's show. We're giving out ten thousand dollars. Ten k nine p e t phone home for that one. She's here, Tammy. And Q3, Jean Ralphio's sister is named after a painting by which artist? Vincent van Gogh, Banksy, or Leonardo da Vinci. I have a free pass. You didn't pick one? No. I feel like it's C though. Banksy seems too recent. Good job. Let's see, let's you guys both done it? Yeah, we're in. Mine, my, my show froze up. I think I'm out. Mine froze up. What day was it? March 31st, his birthday or Christmas. Maybe some of you have a free level, a free pass already to keep you in the game or an extra life for this Q4. April did not think this date actually existed, so she always offered it yeah. until Ron gave her a proper schooling on that classic calendar rhyme. This just says, I can do what I want. I am the director of... 30 days has September, April, March, and November. June and November. Oh. Oh. We, we may have clued you into a future question there, but... March 31st is your answer there. 184,250. Did you also know that? Okay, so that <laughs> yeah, I think we just got jammed on that one. <laughs> Our graphics got jammed up. 184,250 not getting jammed. The rest of you, God, 100,000. I'll see you on June 50th. We got a meeting right now. 93 meetings at Q5. And Miss Nope goes to Washington. What does Ron's permit say? Get out of rules free. I can do what I want or shh. Uh oh. We may have uh, inadvertently made this one a little easier now. Ron takes over the Leslie Nope Employment Enjoyment Summer Slam Grill Jam Fun Explosion in this fifth season premiere and wants to slaughter a piggy in the park. When a park ranger attempts to thwart his plan, well, Ron presents his permit. This just says, I can do what I want. I am the director of the parks department, and this is a park. I can't argue with that. I can do what I want. Ron does what he wants. 187,654 doing battle by themselves. 20,000 of you. I think we showed that earlier, and you still got it wrong. Eh, you blew it. Q6. Which of these activities do Donna and Tom mention when explaining treat yourself? Manicures, Malbec, or massages? Ah, those three magic words. Treat yourself. The best day of the year. The best day of the year. You can get a manicure or a glass of Malbec if that's how you treat yourself, but it's not how these two do it. Clothes. Treat yourself. Fragrances. Treat yourself. Massages. Treat yourself. Mimosas. Treat yourself. Fine leather goods. Yeah, massages. You heard that. I was in there. 99,617. Oh, you're super fans, proving your mettle so far, treating yourselves to Q7. Oh, uh, for this one, uh, can, we, can we call on Councilman Jam for this one? Sure. Why don't you get in here? All right, so this one, Councilman Jam and Leslie managed to have a nice time at karaoke singing a song from what? Fiddler on the Roof, Mamma Mia, or Grease. Okay, my turn to be the, the weirdo in the back. All right. 
Yeah. Ooh. Ah, now you didn't get along with Leslie all the time. That's is that right? Uh, your character. Majority, the majority of the time, no. But he clearly wanted to. Yeah. Clearly and, wanted to be best friends. And you guys did come together on a duet of that show-stopping show tune. Yep. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Summer loving happens so fast. Summer nights from Greece. Summer nights from Greece. Greece is the word at Q7. 85,034 getting this one right for the 30,000 who didn't. Wow. Are you duking on my chest right now? Ouch. Is that, that might be my favorite line. <laughs> duking on my chest. No duking tonight. You're getting Q8, the 85,000 who got that right. Which of these is specifically listed as an ingredient in snake juice, orange juice, sugar, or Kahlua? Still waiting for that first savage question, John. Answer me. We're rolling over to the snake hole lounge at Q8 in my pre-owned Acura Legend for a taste of the juice. It might be a Kahlua-style liqueur and taste like Kahlua, but according to the Tom Haverford's description, Kahlua is not an actual ingredient. Sugar... Coffee and lots of booze are, however. Oh, wait, I, 50,000, 52,000 got this wrong. 35,672 got it right. I'm calling it savage, slightly savage. Not going all the way on this one. Basically, rat poison. That snake juice. You're getting Q9 for those who survived that one. Andy's long kept secrets included which of the following yelling at a sandwich, attacking an animal, or literal money laundering? Remember when Andy found out about Leslie and Ben's pregnancy before they were ready to announce? Yeah. He had to prove he could keep a secret. So he did it by spilling the beans on all his secrets, including this disturbing overshare. I once threw a beer at a swan, and then it attacked my niece, Rebecca. That'll do, Andrew. Secret, secret. I've got a secret. You don't throw beers at swans. Stop looking at me, swan. 14,714 got the right answer here. 30,000 throwing a beer on you. You're out, unless you got that extra life to keep you in. Q10, there are just three questions left, including this one. Which of these is not a compliment Leslie gives to Anne? Graceful Mogwai, Noble Land Mermaid, or Beautiful Spinster? And this is where we separate the fanboys from the fan men and fangirls from the fan women. Leslie was known to lavish, disgruntled nurse Anne Perkins with intense and bizarre praise. She calls her a beautiful, rule-breaking moth. A cunning, pliable, chestnut-haired sunfish, a beautiful spinster, and a poetic, noble land mermaid. But never is sweet Anne compared to a gremlin. Graceful Mogwai, she is not. 15,855 of you are beautiful, graceful H cuties and Parks and Rec superfans. You're getting all the way to the penultimate question tonight. Remember, one million points at $1,000 could be yours if you answer the next two questions. Q11. What kind of topping does Leslie put on her waffles when she has the flu? Whipped cream, ice cream, or no topping? No, Leslie loves kicking it breakfast style with her favorite meal, waffles. Usually, she piles them high with that whippity, creamy stuff. But when Ben brings her some from JJ's diner because she falls ill with the flu? No topping was the answer. Well, we can see her chomping down sans Topping, no topping, nude waff for the win. Four thousand three hundred and thirty. Getting this one right on a savage question. I'm calling it jam. Got jam. <laughs> Eleven thousand plus getting jammed. I should be throwing this right in your face. Four thousand three hundred thirty. Surviving that one at Q11. Mm. That's good. That's good waffle. But we got one more question, folks. Q12, the final round in this Parks and Rec trivia night. And all waffles down to this. For the 4,303 remaining. After over half a million started the quiz, 1 million points, $1,000, and bragging rights for a lifetime. I almost just choked to death. Q12, which of these headlines is visible on Leslie's newspaper wedding dress? Nope wins. Nope 2012 or nope we can. Mm. This is a toughie. It's a toughie, John. That's what I was gonna go see. Do you wanna do you wanna do you wanna celebrate this last quiz last answer with me? Get in here. Get in here. What do you think? I don't even know if I know this. You don't know this one. You're on the show, uh, doesn't know. You know, Leslie's homemade last minute dress, you don't forget that, right? For her wedding to Ben, it came together beautifully. 
Thanks to Anne, of course. Sweet Anne. Oh, uh, man. It was complete with old campaign flyers, right? Portraits of her role models, Madeline Albright, Hillary Clinton, oh, Michelle Obama, and newspaper clippings from her Harvest Festival victory and city council win. Uh, that headline, it says it right there. Nope wins. Nope wins is the answer. Nope. And a Savage Q12, 1794 are our winners. The rest of you. What's this get to? Wow. One thousand seven hundred and ninety-four people won. Is that how that works? One thousand seven hundred and ninety-four HQD survived the Parks and Rec trivia quiz. Congratulations to all of you. You beat out a half a million other players. You win fifty-six cents for all your trouble, plus five hundred fifty-eight points. Yeah, how about that? More points on top of the points you already won for answering all those questions. Congrats, Meg Saltis. Piter, what is it? Petite Ruth. Petite, oh, see, this is why I need you here. Petite Ruth. Mr. Zwick. RJ Moore 87. C Green 10. Eat Chill 6. Beat the Pizza. And C, CM, how was it? C, CM Kelso? How are you doing, Alan? Is that Alvin the Chipmunk? What is that? Looks like there, some Alvin and the Chipmunk sculpture. A little, little chippy. A little chippy there. Hey, congrats to all of you. You're all winners of the Dorothy Everton Smythe Female Empowerment Award. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I expect to see all of you tomorrow on Pawnee Today. Give my regards to Joan Calamezzo. I want to give my regards to John Glazer. And you got a new show. I mean, Parks and Rec is old news. You got a new show on the air right now. Yeah, John Glazer Loves Gear. It's on True TV, uh, Wednesdays at 1030 Eastern. Very funny show. Check it out. Because this is a very funny man. I've been a fan of yours all the way back to the Cheap Seat days. In fact, before that, the short film you did with Adam McKay. Kimosabi with Glenn Fry, the heat is on. You're at the bar. You, you, you show up to the bar. At a teeny v part. Very small part. Teeny part. But I remember that was you. God, that was 20 something years ago. I think I wore my dad's hat. That <laughs> you I wore were girls wearing a funny that. hat. It was the same hat from girls. I hope you got all your, uh, your, your points tonight. You can share your results for more points on social and for more trivia. Come back tomorrow and Saturday, every night at 9 p.m. That's oh. how we do HQ trivia. I'm gigging in New Haven tomorrow, but Matt Richards will be flipping some money for you. I'll see you all back here Sunday night for our big money show. $10,000. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. 9.30. HQ Words is happening. Stick around for that. Until I see you again, I shall remain Scott Rogowski signing off with the words of Leslie in that final episode. Find your team. John Glazer, you got jammed. You Bye. got jammed. Good night.